Oh, well, something's not sound. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a delight to be back again. I was here last year. The very friendly people here in Cardiff. Um, sorry about the rugby. But, uh, sorry. That's <laughs> one. <laughs> no, but it's, it's great to be back here. And uh, usually I'm the last to go on stage at the end of the thing. as Everyone's leaving to go back to their homes. <laughs> so it's nice to be sort of caught the way through. Um, people have been asking me today about what's happening with the new film the new Star Wars film. I really don't know, because I've had no contact, but I'm sure it's going to be terrific, and uh, they, they seem to be very excited about it, so we have to wait a little while for that. Do you think we'll see you on screen in a non-costume uh, role? Like, no, I, uh, don't, I, don't th I don't think you will. I think no. they've purposely gone ahead and filmed this next episode, episode seven, and Boba Fett, in the previous films, when he's gone down to the Sarlacc pit, so he's had it, Science fiction can always bring people back, so you never know. I'd like to be in a shot where I'm in the cantina drinking a very nice drink uh, or something like that. I think that would be fun as a, as a cameo, but no one knows what's going to happen, so something to look forward to. Yeah, because uh, Kiki holds up a little bit, because uh, you're in episode three as uh, Captain Colton, I believe. Yeah, right? Yes, they yeah. suddenly called me up and said, Jeremy, would you like to play this part as Captain Colton? And I said, who's that? And he said, well, this is strange outfit I had to wear, my hair pinned back with earphones, but it, it was another role to play, so that was fun. That was good. You like to sit down, yeah. it's, 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 uh, the seats are there, it's your option. <laughs> I'm allowed to sit down. Huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. What I was going to do, just, just for fun, because you know, oh. people are here and they, they want to get back to where they are, but if I could have two people up on stage here, one lady, one gentleman, Who's going to put their hands up? Yes, yeah, madam. Or mademoiselle. And there's no gentleman and one in gentleman. Car You're in Cardiff, there's no gentleman. Yes. <laughs> you went out last night, did you? Yeah. <laughs> right, very nice to see you. And thank you for, you don't know what's going to happen. Ha, ha, ha. There you are. Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is just, you know, people were saying, how do I get to act? Well, you know, is there an acting school nearby? Could you tell me? You, know, you can't train people, but everybody can be an actor. And this is what I'm going to do, just, just for a fun thing to do. Then you would come forward and you're going to say the lines of Boba Fett. What if he doesn't survive? <laughs> He's worth a lot to me. So, just for fun, I just want to see how you are a female Boba Fett, and you're going to say, what if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me, okay? Right. So the audience is there, they're <coughs> looking at you. Here comes the microphone. And... What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. That's very good, you've got it clear as a bell, but I want more threat. <laughs> What if he doesn't survive? Sorry. What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. Just one more, more tension. What if he doesn't survive? Oh, you, oh, that's an excuse. I've got a bad threat. That's a classic. Look, the audience is not with you on this one. You should sound even better then with the dodgy throw. You need that gravelly <laughs> texture. What if he doesn't survive? Oh, there you go. <laughs> what if he doesn't survive? <laughs> is, that, is that Polish? <laughs> what if he doesn't survive? No, uh, right, once more. What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. Yeah, that's not bad. But I still think you're going to win this. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> what if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. That's much better, that's lovely. Thank you very much indeed, that's just a warm up. <laughs> you see, your, your audience is with you on this, that's good, the audience is with you. So, no, it's, um, I've been lucky that I've been an actor since I was 12 years old, uh, purely because I failed every single exam I took in school and I just couldn't spell, I couldn't add up or anything. So for anybody, there's still a chance to go out there and play the part of your dreams, but with me, it, it was just luck. 
Yeah. Yeah. You've had some good luck in your career. Yeah, right? so, yeah certainly have. Yeah. <laughs> don't know if a lot of you know, but apart from Star Wars, you've also been in two of the biggest franchises in film and TV, in both James Bond yes. and Doctor Who. Yeah. And Do Doctor Who was wonderful. I mean, it was just such fun to do, playing an archer, you know, bows and arrows. And they had a special armourer coming down and said, uh, uh, you the actor? I said, yes, I've come down the night before to learn how to pull a bow and arrow, how to do it properly. He said, I don't like actors. I want you to listen to what I'm going to do. Watch what I do, because I'm an archer. You've got to be someone called Hal the Arm, I don't know. And I thought, how, how rude he was. So he said, right, look, here you are. Come on, hold it now. And what you're going to do is you're going to hold there, right, the arrow in there, and you, poof, and he hit the side of the target. I said, that, that was fantastic. He said, right, you do it. Just, just get on with it. Come on. And I thought, what have I done to get him so angry? So he said, pull it on, put the arrow in there, back, and poof, I hit the bull. <laughs> so there was this long silence, and... You're trying to be funny. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not. I just pulled it. It's just pure luck. I pulled it and it got, got into the centre. Right. But the way you shot that was not very good. So I'm trying to get you as a proper archer. I said, oh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And I was getting quite nervous. So he said, right, do it like this. Up comes the arrow. <laughs> and he hit the side of the target again. I said, well, that was really close. Just listen. Sorry. Up again. <laughs> Centre of the ball. <laughs> and now there was an even longer pause. We were just standing looking at each other. He said, you've done this before, haven't you? I said, well, yes, I have. Many years ago, I had a toy bow and arrow with a rubber suction. <laughs> he said, no, no, we're talking about the proper, the proper thing. I said, oh, I'm terribly sorry. And I remember him going to talk to the director at the time. He said, I can't work with him. He said, you know, he's not listening to us. And I said, now, well, hang on a second. I, you, I said I would watch what you were doing. But that was the most embarrassing and most awful day of my life. But that was cool. um, Some questions. Yeah, if you have questions, okay, you can get around to you if you stick your hands up. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the lady right down in front. Hang on, yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, do you have any gossipy anecdotes from the, set, from the set of Star Wars? Uh, gossipy? Yeah. No, the only, well, it's not really gossipy. I mean, it was very difficult to talk to other people with the masks on <laughs> and things like this. But uh, Dave Prowse and I, Darth Vader and myself, we were coming into the carbon freezing chamber and we were walking down the stairs and suddenly I trod on Dave's cloak and he went crashing to the ground. I went back the other way. And the little Ugnaughts, the guys said, you all right, you know, because we were just rehearsing it. And I pulled him off, they pulled me off. And luckily they just let it go because it looked ridiculous. Two of the sort of serious villains flaunting all over the place. <laughs> but it was top heavy. The jetpack I had would make you go one way and you couldn't, you had to stand like this. So, so that was that wasn't gossipy, but it was still terrible. You were talking. <laughs> um, no one ever knew. I don't think George Lucas ever knew that we we fell over and got rather silly. Really. Yeah, how did it feel to land that role in James Bond? Because at the time, James Bond was it was sort of riding the crest of the wave at that time. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because it, this, my agent said there's a small part of someone called Smithers, Q's assistant. And would you, you know, would you go up for it? I said, fine. He said, but it is not very much. And it was a tiny part. But to have been able to work with Roger Moore three times on three different films, he is the nicest man in the world. He'd come down and t talk to Desmond Lowell, and he said, oh, I'm doing a shot. Oh, and you're Jeremy. That's right. Nice to have you with us. Whatever you do, don't listen to Desmond, because he talks rubbish. <laughs> so he would go, oh, Roger, do stop it. It's so difficult to learn these lines if you're going to start having a go at me. And there was this terrible, funny, funny thing going on. He said, well, if you get your lines right, um, Desmond, you know, we should be finished by lunchtime, or maybe tomorrow if you haven't got And he was just, he's a very gentle man, Roger Moore, and he's, he's funny, and he makes everyone feel... I mean, now, if he came in here now, he said, oh, a lot of people, that's good. 
and he would be just very gentle and nice man. You guys got any, any more questions there? Well, I thought your time was going back up. Sir, yeah, so from Malaysia. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, uh, first things first, uh, I really admire you as Boba Fett in Star Wars. Real serious facial expression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very serious. Yes, yes. very serious. Under what the... is your favorite scene as Boba Fett in Star Wars? I think my favourite scene in Star Wars has to be when you have the three bounty hunters as Darth Vader comes in and says, no disintegrations. And that was the sort of the start. What, what is he about, this guy, Boba Fett? He's obviously the leader of the, the bounty hunters. And that, that was my favourite scene. Thank you. There was one awful time when going to the carbon freezing chamber and taking Han Solo up into Slave One and I had to turn around and say, put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. Well, on the day we were there, they said, Jeremy, ready? Yes, fine. The helmet went on, standing like that, the Imperial officer. I turned around and said, put Captain Cargo in the Solo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how can you have, how many lines? I don't know, six and a half, four and a half lines, and you completely cock it up, you know. It was really, that, that was embarrassing. So you have this spotted. And I thought, they, they just said, right, cut. And I nearly said, oh, by the way, I said the wrong line. But of course, they can't hear what you're saying. You're going, put cut and cut and throw the hell. You, you don't understand what someone's saying. And luckily, I got away with that one. And, and people, know, I, people know about it now. George Lucas laughed when he heard it. But it could have been the end of my career. You know? Yeah. Thankfully, it wasn't, though. Oh, yes, yeah. thankfully. Still. Still uh, when you came back for episode six, yes. uh, with the, this is very action uh, opening. Uh, so how, how did they work that with uh, yourself and the, these? Obviously, you have a stunt double, I think. Well, for no, the, you, the you have a stunt. Yeah, yeah, the stunt double has to. I mean, the fall into the pit that is done by well, four different stunt men did that fall because two got injured. One had his kneecap fairly badly bruised. So in the end, I could have done it, because there was only one stuntman who had it. No, that was a dangerous stunt. And uh, to be quite honest, you, you wouldn't be allowed to do it. it you, it's too complicated. And if I got injured, then I could say, um, well, amicably, you could sue and say, look, I can't work, and you'd be limping along, because it was dangerous. Any more questions out there, guys? Let's see if we can get some. Played, oh. I know, we know you played Boba Fett in Empire Strikes Back, but you also played uh, Imperial Officer with uh, Carrie Fisher. That's correct, yeah. Uh, how did that role come about? Well, that was, that's interesting, because no one's asked that. It completely out of the blue, I thought, I don't have anything to do with the Boba Fett. I can sit down, just while the set, watching what's going on. And I remember trying to look for the result of Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> I was reading the paper. And suddenly he said, Jeremy, quickly get changed. I said, oh, I didn't really know I'm finished. No, you're just starting, come on. Get changed out of the Boba Fett outfit into the left hand of the ship. And that's what it was. I, I happened to be available and they had no one else to do it. So I ended up playing another part. So that was fun. <laughs> yes, when you need a small part, call on Jeremy. <laughs> Did you get paid for it though? That's the most important no, you, thing. You don't get paid because you're paid oh. by the day. So you ah. don't suddenly say, I'm sorry, I'm playing a different character. You should do, but the way they work, it's just, when you do us a favor, yes, of course. And you're all part of a big family. So it's good, it's good. <coughs> Any more questions out there, folks? It is a joke there. Yeah, the phrase bounty hunter, I'm yeah. amazed they haven't altered that. It's mercenaries become private defense contractor, and it's all sorts of political correct words. If you could choose, how would you now define the term bounty hunter in all its political correct majesty? I would call it, um, if you wanted to speak to Boba Fett, you'd call him the Fett. <laughs> it's as simple as that, the Fett. He's done his training, he's extremely dangerous. Not, not this weekend. <laughs> but it, it would, he'd be called the first. I think that would be best. Right, two more people up here. 
No, it's all right. Don't worry. I'm not going to ask you to shoot. Yeah, there's a yes. gentleman there. Did there's you a gentleman and a lady again? Or there's you... a brave young lad. No, he's going to come up on stage. This is a... Is there a gentleman and a lady? Or oh, yes, a... absolutely. Uh, we need a, a young lady now. You're next. Yeah, that's you are, <laughs> That's very kind of you. Now you can either do this, the dodger one, put, put Captain Solo in the cargo hold, or you can say put Captain or put Captain Cargo in the solo hold. <laughs> the wrong one and the right one. Would you like to go first? Now, standing like this. Okay. You can look at somebody out there, just threaten them with a look. Not a giggle. <laughs> it's hard not to giggle. Uh, it's, it's, look, oh, it's the perfect, a, perfect atmosphere to giggle. You, you can if you want, but it's better to be you know, strong. Ooh, dangerous, <laughs> dangerous. Right, so it's, what if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. Or you can do, put Captain Cargo in the solo hold. <laughs> That's the wrong one, but anyway. <laughs> so are you ready? Yeah. Good. Put Captain Solo in the cargo hold. Grumpy, grumpy. <laughs> that's that's terrific. That's really good. And now this is a this is a pure choice between the two. Ready? Put Captain Cargo in the solo hold. <laughs> oh, very good, excellent. Well, I think that's a joint. Very good. Yours was a light and snappy and quite nasty. His was deep and clever. It's very good. Thank you. So, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's lovely to come down again, you know, the different, you get invited everywhere. Disney in Orlando, I get invited every year to, for the Star Wars weekends, and I feel I'm very lucky because I've probably done more than, but the character makes him being, the kids want to see Boba Fett, and that's the only reason I get invited, because I've done it so many times. But my wife and I go down there and you spend the whole week, plus, you, they work you for a whole week, but it's still terrific fun. And you get a chance to say, put Captain Cargo in the cellar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that forever now. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any projects uh, that you've done very recently that you can tell us about that are in the pipeline for uh, coming up maybe next year? Well, the, the, the one that I'm doing at the moment is a, a voice to a cartoon. And of course, you do the voice and then they do the cartoon afterwards. So I'm going up to do that. Uh, Monday and that's where I'm playing well at the moment we've got to a voice me <laughs> and they're going to have subtitles <laughs> I just can't understand so that's what I'm doing uh, plus possibly going back to the theatre not too sure that, that, that might happen and then uh, other days you'll be invited somewhere to would you like to come to this event so we do quite a few but then there's all the grandchildren, so you make sure you don't do too much, so otherwise you never see the kids at all. Any more questions from the audience? Do we have any out there? But you mentioned theatre there. Uh, do you have any aspirations left as a theatre actor? Is there any plays out there that you would be desperate to do? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, there are lots of parts. I'd like to go back and do the play I did it's ten years ago, but I'm now too old. To do that, but I'd like to have gone back to do that. Dangerous Obsession, it was, and you had this music going through the whole thing. It was quite a threatening psychological thriller. But that, that is something I'd like to go back to do. But I am too old, I have to admit. And I've got to the point where, having done a lot of theatre, it doesn't matter now whether you go back and do another play or not. But if it comes up, then of course you'd say, well, you know, I think I'd like to do that. So that could happen. Any questions? Oh, yeah, how are you going in, sir? What films you work on? What was your favourite experience? Uh, good question. Uh, the Star Wars films, of course, were fun, great fun. I enjoyed the films with Roger Moore. Um, also, I have to say, Summer Holiday with Cliff Richard. We, I mean, I was barely 17 when I did that. But we went down to Greece, and it was the most happiest time, because Cliff would be going, now, 
Jeremy, this is the bit we're going to be singing. You may be singing, but they may dub your voice with proper singers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Thanks for letting me know. So it was, we're all going on a summer holiday, no more working for a week or two. From man laughter and a summer holiday. Thank you. Questions out there, folks? We got any more? I have to say, I do like your Boba Fett costume, mate. Yeah. That's wicked. <laughs> oh, yes, the Boba Fett costume with the baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Was it an easy costume to wear? No, never. It was. Um, it was tight. It was hot, and you just dripped. They kept taking the helmet off and damping you down with chamois leather, uh, which helped you out for it but it was you breathe up and then the the mist would come up where you where you could hardly see you. so it was uncomfortable but it wasn't worth saying excuse me George it's very hot in here could we have a break you don't do you just get on with it and do it uncomfortable but looks good on screen so as is a way I suppose yes yeah, yeah. there's a gentleman there the gentleman there has a question gentleman um, is there's rumours of a, they're going to do a like young Boba Fett film, a, you know, a prequel. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about that? I think it's nice if it's done really well. I think there is going to be, I'm sure there'll be a spin-off, something of his early life, Boba Fett. Uh, obviously in the up-and-coming film, episode seven, he's, he's gone. But I think there will be still, you'll hear about Boba Fett. There. I can't, don't think they'll lose out on that. They'll, they'll have a special film. Hopefully, and then I can be technical advisor. <laughs> or he wouldn't. He wouldn't say put Captain Cargo in the sofa. Oh, no, <laughs> and he wouldn't do that either. So, so that might be fun to be. Yeah. How many days still means to do? How many? Sorry, days. Oh, well, that's a good yeah. point. I think I did three weeks on one and two weeks on Return of the Jedi, and then I think half an hour in the, in the new film. Yeah. That was. Not the new film that's being done now, yeah. the, the other. So complicated because it's, is it episode one, four, five, seven, eight? <laughs> Did it ever occur to you that when you were filming the, during episode five, that okay, Star Wars had come out, it was a mm. huge success, uh, but everyone didn't know how it would fare. With the next one coming out, and everyone pretty much says episode five is the best of all yeah. the Star Wars films. Yeah. Did you ever, did anyone ever have that feeling that it was going to get as big as it has got? I don't think anybody could possibly know that it was going to be, you know, pretty huge. And people were going back to see the film again. When they re-released the film back in the cinemas, in 1996, something like that. Yeah, 97, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's when it really took off. It took off before that, but that's when people were saying, Oh, they're going to have it on because because it was going on the big screen. They said, "Yes, we're going to see it again." So suddenly, the ones who were six and seven suddenly were eighteen, nineteen. So they could they could think about it in their own way. And it's I just think it was clever marketing. And they, Boba Fett, who's he? So you got more. If they hadn't re-released the films, I don't think you would have thought about Boba Fett too much more. It was you know it was just a nice short cameo but they pushed it quite hard and they said would you would I go to America which I did ladies and gentlemen and it was great to be introduced on the stage of the cinema this is the character Boba Fett and I said thank you very much and that was a that was a great great thing yeah, I I think that's that's the <laughs> and oh, yes. Well, yeah, basically just did you realize when you were filming it that you were going to be one of the most popular characters even though you were quite a short part that it would be Actually, when people go, oh, which one's your favourite? Loads and loads of people do go. Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, that's uh, talk about being lucky. I think it was. I mean, I, I fitted the costume like a glove. The shoes are size 10. I'm size 10. The, the collar here was perfect. And, and everything everything fitted. They didn't have to say, well, we need to make a little niche there. We need to do that there. It fitted. And that's, that's luck. And I don't think they had, they don't want to waste time. It was just 
put the helmet on to see what happens. And, it, and luckily, the character took off. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of the 1970s Doctor Who episode you did, uh, Time Warrior. Oh, the Time Warrior. Quite iconic, of course, first appearance of Santarans, first appearance of Sarah Jane. But what do you remember about it? It's a big location to shoot, wasn't it? Yes, I mean, the, the Doctor Who, the Time Warrior, again, talking about the bow and arrow incident, um, it was it was a great story to be in, with, so sadly, with Sarah Jane, but she, she was there. And then the funny story that came up was a, the producer said, Jeremy, when are you free? Are you, you doing anything after this? After the, the... I said, well, I don't know, maybe. And I should have followed that up because it was going, I was going to be asked to be the male companion and to go in with my archery set into the time, the time thing. But that could have been a, a lovely story and I would have gone on maybe done two or three episodes or four episodes. So that, I, I remember that really well. Who, who would you class then as your, your favourite doctor? If you, did you watch the series after you'd been oh, in yes. it as well? And, yes. In the, uh, lead I, up to I think all the doctors were good in their own right, but uh, John Pertwee is my favourite because I did most of the work. William Hartnell was interesting when I did the Space Museum. And in those, all those days, it was black and white. And I had these eyebrows up here that were stuck because you had to look slightly alien. And I remember the studio was getting hotter and hotter. And these eyebrows were coming down like that. And you used to literally take them off and stick them on. And in the end, there was one here and one here. You look ridiculous, but it doesn't matter. It's science fiction. That's, that was almost live television. Oh, yeah, there's Jimmy. Did you manage to come away with any props from Star Wars or Doctor Who? If I'd been a thief, I would have taken the stuff from him. <laughs> I would have done. Uh, but it, I'm not naturally a thief, so I didn't. I just looked at them and said, hmm. Because I know some of the uh, people, what, like here, like, like here, they came away with fewer props of, like, say, a jacket or... Yeah, this, uh, I think there, there was the story, yeah, sorry, there, there was the story about um, people on the Star Wars set were gradually saying, oh, it's just nice. Oh, what's that? Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? You know, so that something happened. I think a few people nicked. Yeah. But I, I wouldn't do that. You weren't giving anything to the If I'd been wearing the Boba Fett costume, I probably would. <laughs> 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 exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's me, sorry. I would have done that, but I'm not, a, I'm not a fan. Would you still wear it now? Yeah, I mean, I, I've got a replica costume given to me by the dented helmet to say thank you, which was nice. And I've worn it four times for charity, and that was that was quite fun, putting it back on again and walking around and staring at people. This is a strange person, what's he doing? But that, that, was, that was fun. Yeah, maybe you extend on that a little bit. If you could take, if you could have one prop from your time on set, what would you have liked to have been? That's a good, that's a good question. It's okay. I was listening to that. <laughs> um, favorite? Yeah, if you could have uh, one prop from your time on Star Wars, what would it have been? I think it would be the, the gun, the rifle. Or if it's called the rifle, but that that was nice. I used to just rest it on my hip. And it was the perfect angle to just get ready to do this. But it was heavy. People were saying, um, do you have problems with it? I said, no, I can lift that up. That's easy. And you'd be, in, be there like this, and then your hand would go down. So I put my hand like this, resting it across there. And someone came up and said, Mr. Bullock, I love the way you hold the rifle. And I said, well, thank you. Actually, it was coming down. But it, it was to support that on your hand. The, the reason, the moody. But you had to get stuff to look in the mirror and start saying, would you stand like this? Because if you stand slightly too to the left, you'd go crashing to the ground because you're unbalanced. It's all... And that's not a night out in Cardiff, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Sunday morning after the night oh, in Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Any more questions out there from you? Where can some famous... Who was your favourite director to work for? I, th I think Irvin Kirshner. Yeah. It has to be him because he, he, he made me laugh because he said, 
there was a scene where I had to walk not very far at all. He put his arm around my shoulder and said, Jeremy, I want you to follow me here. I said, okay, fine. So we did the walk. He said, fine. So I want you like this. And it felt, it didn't feel right. So he said, have you got that? Do you understand what I'm saying? I said, yeah, absolutely. I said, it's fantastic the way did. So they'd start, stand by, here we go. So I did a completely different walk, which was more comfortable. And he said, well done, exactly. He, he likes to follow or, or act. I mean, a lot of directors want to act and tell the actor, that's what I want you to do. And with him, it was great fun because he'd, he'd look at you and you'd completely change the walk he, he did. And so you just say, well, that's it, thank you. I mean, he, he's a good director. Is that something you ever thought about doing yourself is going to the other side of the camera and going to, uh, either down the, the writing route or the yeah. producer, director, that kind of thing? I thought about probably when I was about 18 that you'd, you'd say, oh, could I, without being rude, say, could I look through the camera? That was when I started to think it'd be nice to be a clever cameraman and a good director. That, but you'd have to follow it up and you'd stay on overnight and you'd be working on different shots. So that, that would be good, be able to just get the, and to see it on screen. You'd think you'd, you'd made it, but there's too much hard work there. Any more questions from the audience? Do you have any action figures of yourself? Oh, of course, hundreds. <laughs> I'm so, no, it, the great thing is you don't, <laughs> it just feels so funny that this, I mean, today there's so many, there's some new ones I've seen, a packet with a Stormtrooper and Boba Fett. And the merchandise, I mean, that's, I think George, Lew George Lucas was very clever because he got all this merchandise. Yeah, I think that was the original scene that he made, wasn't but it? But I do have a, a, quite a lot of stuff. You know, but I can tell the time by the Boba Fett watch. Yeah. Um, you can set fire to people, you know, anything you want. That's <laughs> yeah, nice. Any more questions out there? Yeah, on you go, sir. Did the uh, archery skills you learned on Doctor Who kind of useful when you worked on Robin of Sherwood? Yes, it did. Although, in the end, I used to use a staff to hit people with, uh, not a bow and arrow. But, but you talk about that was another series that was wonderful to be on. Because we all did some training with the staff and getting it absolutely right about how wild you'd be. And that, that was sadly they didn't do any more, but that was a good, good series. Is there any series on just now that you watch or a particular fan of that you, if they rang up and said, oh, we have a part for you, mm. uh, which show would you like to be on? I think I'd like to do another Doctor Who, so I could have done three, so I've done two lots of stories, but a third one would be great, and then I could wear a funny hat or something, <laughs> be <laughs> Doctor's friend. Yeah. Would you come back as your previous character, just as, as as now, you know, yes, I mean, I, yeah, that would be fun as well. But I mean, you'd have to. I mean, I, I've never picked up a phone and say, Hello, this is Jeremy Bullock. Uh, I was involved with this, that, and the other. I'd like to be considered to be in the new story of Doctor Who at any chance. Now, funny enough, that could happen. But I never like, I've never liked to ask anybody to be in something. But if you were really desperate and really thought, I've got to do this, then you should go up and say, I think I'd be great for the next villain. And they said, well, we don't know who the next villain is going to be in Doctor Who. Of course, yes, I forgot that. So that would be something I, I would do. Probably Doctor Who would be nice to be a different part. Is there any more questions from the audience? Thank you for the dark side. <laughs> no, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for yeah. being and a yep, if great raconteur here. Yeah. Like to show your appreciation for Mr. Jim. <laughs>